There are games out there that no matter what we do, we may never get to play. But there may be a solution to this problem, and we may already be unconsciously doing it. You see, there's a game that I've only recently been paying attention to called Gestalt Steam and Cinder. It's actually the game from the thumbnail, and if you ask me, it looks pretty good. It was revealed a few years ago back in the dark times, but for some reason I didn't find out about it until now. Despite how high quality it looks, this game almost passed me by entirely. And that got me thinking about a pretty scary idea. To explain what it is, let's look at Hollow Knight. Hollow Knight is one of the most popular indie games of all time. It's also got one of the most unique looking art styles. Part of the reason for this is because most indies opt for a more nostalgic style. And to be clear, I really like this style. I grew up playing games like this, so being able to experience something that emulates that style with more modern game design techniques is almost always going to be fun for me. I think the reason most indie games go for this style is twofold. First, they want to capture the nostalgia that I already mentioned before. Maybe they want to make games that look like the games they remember, or maybe they believe that their audience will have some sort of nostalgic reaction to that style. But either way, the end result of a game that looks something like this remains the same. The second reason they may do this might be ease of access. Now take this with not just a grain of salt, but the entire Pacific Ocean, since I've never made a game before. But I'd imagine it's easier to create an art style like this than it is to make one that looks like this. As a result, you'll just naturally have more games that look like the former. But I think there's a third reason to make games look like this, and it may be the most important of all. Preservation. See, AAA devs don't really make games that look like this anymore. And while you have the rare games like Octopath or remasters and re-releases, the style itself would be in jeopardy if it wasn't for these indie developers. Now I say all of this because I'm about to say some things that might make it sound like I hate all pixel art games, or that I think they're obsolete, but that just isn't the case. I just think there's an inherent negative that isn't really their fault. To understand what that is, let's circle back to Hollow Knight. Hollow Knight is a game so exceptionally high quality in nearly every aspect that I'm confident it was going to succeed regardless of the art style that they chose. However, I'd be lying if I said the art style wasn't a large contributing factor to the success of that game. Obviously I don't have the numbers, but hear me out, because I think this makes sense. Imagine you're watching some kind of gaming presentation that shows you a bunch of different indie trailers. The innate problem with trailers is that you only get to see a very small portion of information. You'll know almost nothing about the story or characters relative to what's actually in the game, and you'll likely only hear one song, maybe two if you're lucky. So the things that really have to stand out here are the gameplay and the art style. The gameplay is in a bit of a weird position in that you can only see small sections of it. And perhaps more importantly, you don't get to actually play it yourself. This leaves us with the art style, something that you probably know whether you like or not at a glance. In fact, it's the only aspect of the game that, in just one image, you'll immediately be able to determine the quality of. This is why it's so important. It carries the most amount of information in the least amount of time. But this is also why it can start to be a problem. Let's look at my current game of the year, which will likely be topped in a few days, Chained Echoes. This game is a perfect example of the idea that a distinctive visual style isn't intrinsically tied to a game's quality. You've certainly played dozens, maybe even hundreds of games that look like Chained Echoes, but I doubt you've played many games as good as Chained Echoes. This isn't the type of game where once you glance at it, you immediately pick it up. It's the type of game that when you pick it up, you never put it down. That is to say that while Chained Echoes has quality in spades, it looks, at a glance, just like any other 16-bit indie game. I think you can almost instantly see why this is such a problem. Without a unique art style, a game isn't going to stand out in a sea of similar looking games. And as a result, just like videos from a channel you're not subscribed to, you might miss them. Now, of course, there are going to be exceptions to this. I mean, games like Celeste are right there. You don't have to look like Oberdin to succeed as an indie game. However, I ask that you consider a rather unsettling question. How many exceptional indie games are out there that you'll never play because they didn't stand out enough? I'd imagine the answer to that isn't something crazy like hundreds of thousands of them, but surely there are a few, right? So we're presented with a problem that can be tackled from one of two sides that of the developer and that of the player. We've gone over how to solve this from the developer's side already, but what do we do on the player's side? I'm not sure. 
I mean, yeah, you can listen to music and watch gameplay, but those aren't really proper solutions. I mean, remember, this is about first impressions. People don't often buy games based solely on their art style. You look up reviews, you watch people play it, you ask a friend, but you wouldn't even reach any of those steps if it weren't for the initial impression. And that positive initial impression doesn't happen if the game doesn't stand out. Now, normally this is the part of my videos where I present an answer to the question at the beginning, or a solution to the problem but I genuinely don't know how to fix this, if you can fix this. We just have to give up and accept the fact that there's a great indie game out there that we'd absolutely love, but we'll never get to play despite the fact that we may have even seen it before, all because it just didn't stand out enough. But what if that's wrong? I mean, what if we're looking at all of this the wrong way? Hear me out, maybe it doesn't have to be unique. Maybe the goal is to just find an art style that best captures the idea of the game and just generally what you're going for when creating it. I mean, go back to Chained Echoes for a minute. That game was clearly inspired by Chrono Trigger and Final Fantasy VI, and you can see that in the gameplay, the story, the characters, and even the art style. And it's not just Chained Echoes. Gestalt might be an even more interesting case. I didn't notice this game three years ago back when it was first revealed, but you know what I also hadn't done three years ago? I hadn't played any Castlevania games. Perhaps an art style simply has to be something that conveys the spirit of your game, even subconsciously, to the player. These games may have never made the first impressions that they did if I hadn't been interested in their inspiration. If your art style isn't some unique, one-of-a-kind masterpiece that's never been seen before, maybe it should instead function almost as a demo, or a message even, telling the player that this game is inspired by certain games they may remember. And looking back, I can think of plenty of games where this was the case. I'm sure you can as well, and I think that may be the key to all of this. You see, because your art style doesn't have to show the player something they've never seen before. It just has to show them something they have. Speaking of indie games, here's a video on why I can't recommend the best one.